If you were not here uh, when I gave announcements next week, Brother David, uh, it's kind of been ended up and lots of folks doing lots of things. I mean, they even put us out of being able to go downstairs. And so, uh, uh, I don't know. So, uh, uh, but anyway, so if you come next week and say, oh, I didn't sign up that list. <clears throat> well, Brother David was working on the count, so on Tuesday I grabbed the list. And I, I had lots of people to it that wasn't on the list, just so you know. All right, so I got you covered. If your name wasn't on the list, we have food for you. So uh, just come out next week and uh, oh, we have, what's that? Come and die. Come and die. The pastor called. Come and die. All right. All right. Amen. So I just want to get that invitation. And uh, we are super excited, man. You guys, I know this pastor appreciation stuff, you're just like going above and over the top. And so just thank you. It's humbling. It's humbling. So we had very little to do. And so uh, uh, we did what Brother David asked us to do. And so we're looking forward to uh, 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 all of that. So thank you uh, once again. And I uh, just want you to be prepared for next week. Remember, no service next Sunday night as well. So you can stay. If you want to stay until 8, 9 o'clock at night, you won't be disrupting service. I'm not promising you I'm staying that long with you. Uh, only if there's good food and conversation, all right? And my girls are behaving. And, uh, but you can stay as long as you want. But uh, when we have fifth Sunday like that, we don't do a Sunday evening service. We come out, uh, just fellowship. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew chapter number 13, I'm going to start reading verse number 45, just two verses there. The Bible says, again, this again just simply is telling us that he's telling us another parable. It's a kingdom parable. Amen. It is number six of the parables that he is sharing here. And so the Bible says, again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. Amen. Uh, uh, here it is. Uh, there's a lot that can satisfy. Amen. There's a lot that man can get a hold of and man can make better. But you know, uh, pearl is not like gold. It doesn't need to be refined. It's not like silver. It doesn't need to be refined. It's not like a diamond. It doesn't need to be cut. But here is a pearl, and it's one of the only substances, amen, that cannot be improved on by mankind. Hallelujah. Don't you like the knowledge of God, even above everything? And maybe there wasn't the knowledge that uh, back in those days that jewelers have today, but God knew about that knowledge. And so here in this sixth kingdom parable, amen, he is sharing that here is a pearl. Amen. Mankind, you can't do anything to improve this. It is the best of the best. It's the best there is. Amen. And the Bible says, uh, and that pearl, by the way, is Jesus Christ. That pearl is the gift of salvation that's found in Jesus Christ. There is no improvement upon it. Amen. The same salvation message that was preached 2,000 uh, 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 years ago, amen, is the still the same salvation message. There is one way, there is one truth, there is one life, there is one door, and that is Jesus Christ. There is no other. Amen? So here is that pearl of great price. So a, a, a merchant was seeking that pearl, who when he had found uh, one pearl of great price, amen, this is the pearl among many, but the greatest pearl of all pearls is Jesus Christ. Amen? You may say, I found a pearl of a wife. I found a pearl of a husband. I have a pearl of a grandma or grandpa or mother or father. Amen. Well, the pearls of pearls, the greatest is Jesus Christ. Amen. And there's none equal to Him. Right. Amen. The Bible says, went and sold all that He had, and He bought it. Amen. This pearl that is worth everything will cost you everything. Amen. It will cost you everything. And so uh, I need to tell you that when we're talking about the pearl of great price, there are some gifts that have been given to us. And I wish I would have. I've said something similar to this, but this is, this is really good. Um, uh, Arnold Bennett said, you wake up in the morning and lo, your purse is magically filled with 24 hours the most precious 
of possessions. Wow. The good things in this life have to be paid for in advance, while the evil things we do are paid for generally on installment plans. So I'm talking, <coughs> talking this morning about the pearl of great price. Amen. Uh, 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 the power of the kingdom, the price of the kingdom, it will literally cost man everything that he has to get this pearl of great price. <clears throat> How many of you know that life costs? I was, I was talking to someone a couple weeks ago, and, and so, you know, I see lots of people in the course of a day, and so I, I, I said to this man, I said, uh, I said, I said, good morning, how are you? He said, I'm still six feet above ground. And so I said, that's, that's great news. He said, well, I fear it this way. He said, it's cheaper to live than what it is to die. He said, have you looked at the price of funerals lately? <laughs> I said, no, I haven't. But everything in life costs us something, even death, right? At least a proper burial. And so when we look at every good thing in life has to be paid for, do you know a good marriage has to be paid for? I'll get there in just a couple minutes, but I, 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 I love Google. I love Google. It's wonderful. So I wanted to see what is the price of marriage these days. And so uh, I looked it up, and so uh, the American Wedding uh, Society says that the average wedding uh, costs now $44,000. Wow. I hope my girls either decide to get married on the same day or get married many years in between each other. <laughs> Some of you probably have went to the knot. I've used that even as a minister to look at wedding vows and various things. It's a big wedding planner thing. And their, their price tags a little differently, but they said the average cost of a wedding for this year, 2019, is $33,391. Amen. It costs to get married. But I need to tell you something else. The marriage is going to cost you even more if you want to have a good marriage. And it's going to be more than what you pay uh, for uh, monetarily. It is going to cost you your time. It's going to cost you your energy. It's going to cost you what you want to do. Amen. Versus what your spouse wants to do. And a collaboration of coming together and making it work. A good marriage will cost you. It doesn't just happen. It will cost. Do you know that it will cost you for a peaceful home? Amen. The things uh, in, in your home that have a peaceful home, it will cost you. Amen. Google again. And my wife and I have agreed on this. Do you know that stuff around your home and, and when things are kind of accumulate in your home, it can make you feel stressed? <laughs> and you know that? You don't have to raise your hand. But they say clutter-free home is a much more peaceful home. We live in a, in a world that, that produces getting and achieving and having things and, 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 and some grew up in a generation where you don't throw anything away because you might need it later, sooner or later. So you keep it. And so, uh, but they say that there's a price to be paid for living in a home that's cluttered. It takes you more time and energy. You feel frustrated about cleaning it. It takes you more time and energy because you're looking for keys, wallets, shoes, and socks are the four top things. And you get frustrated. Don't say anything to my wife about if I look for that. All right. So there's a price tag that comes with having a peaceful home. And then we think about having education. And for the most part, we think about education. And most people want to gain an education because they want to be able to help other people. So there's a price tag that is paid for education. In the, this school year, 2018 and 19, uh, statistics, I don't have them for next year, amen, but to go to a private college uh, in, in this school year, uh, you are going to pay on average 
$35,676 for one year of education to obtain a bachelor's degree uh, this, this year. That's just one year. $36,000. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, over $35,000. Almost $36,000. $35,676. If you go to a, pri a public a college and you live in state, you will pay $9,716. If you're going to a public college and you're outside of state, you're going to pay $21,629. Can I tell you that there is a price tag for everything in life? Everything. Can you think about what the price tag is to honor and respect others? But can I challenge you this morning? There is a price tag for spiritual things, such as a prayer life, and such as a knowledge of understanding the Word of God. There's a price tag. Everything in life has a price tag. And we will pay for something even when you think you're not paying for it. And so when we think about that, all of these demands that in our life needs attention. It requires a price tag. Amen. Some of the greatest tragedies of life comes from the demands that, that evil and sin will make us pay. Because regardless of, of, of whatever we do in life, at some point we will pay for the things that we want in life. And so, uh, when we look at that, the, 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 the tragedy of evil and the price that is paid, I often think this, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm so glad that I don't have to work for minimum wage. Amen. If I had to, I would. If that's what I had to do to support my family, I would work for minimum wage. But for most of us and most everybody, when we get beyond that entry level that place in our life, and we get to that place where we have a skill and occupation, we have knowledge, we get beyond that minimum wage. Do you know how many people in this world is working for minimum wage spiritually? Uh, for the wages of sin is death. The minimum wage is death. But to go on and gain a greater wage. Amen. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift. Amen. To be able to pay more. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We don't have to work for minimum wage. Amen. We can work for more. But when we think of the tragedy that's paid for through sin. The rich young ruler who came to Jesus. Most of us know that story. He had watched him being surrounded by children. He's seen his warmth. He's seen his kindness. Amen. And he came to Jesus. And he said in Luke 18, 18, and a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Amen. And this young man, he was looking for something that was good. Amen. But he needed to be looked for something that was more than just good. Amen. To inherit eternal life. It was desirable to have. But when the master began to tell him the price tag of something, the young ruler, he walked away sorrowful. Amen. Because he felt the price tag was too high. How many ever looked at something and you see the price tag and think, whoa, I will wait on that. <laughs> You're like, wow. That price tag's a little too much to normal. We've all experienced that. Amen. Whether it's something just simple at Walmart or whether it's our, our home or our vehicle or where we went to school, however that is, we look and we said that price tag is just too high. But I need to tell you the price for serving Christ will cost you everything. But it is everything. It is the pearl of great price. And when you found everything, you will sell everything to obtain that pearl of great price. I think about David and his life. We think about several things about David. And David is like, 
though he was known as a man after God's own heart, David sinned. He sinned against Bathsheba. He sinned against Uriah. We think about that. And so there were installments that came in David's life that he paid for the price of sin. He looked at Bathsheba. He conceived the child with Bathsheba. He, he had her, her husband uh, put to the front of war and murder. And we find that the prophet comes to him and Nathan comes and he gives him a story. The prophet says to him, Nathan says to David, he says, David, did you hear about the man who was wandering coming through, coming through the countryside and he was hungry? And he wanted a lamb. And so a man who had many lambs went and took a lamb from a poor man who only had one. And David immediately said, Who is this villain? Who is this thief? He's going to pay for it. And Nathan says, David, thou art the man. The ache of sin came home. David paid for the ache through his heart. That was the first installment. But then David heard the tragic news of a son Abnon. The terrible act he committed against his sister Tamar. And oh, it broke daddy's heart to think of the terrible act that could have happened. It didn't stop there. But Absalom hated him though for what he did to his sister. And in David's household, Absalom kills Anna. Can you imagine as a parent the heartbreak, the price, the price of sin? It goes on that you'll find that Absalom comes back to the kingdom and David's very own turns on him and David goes running from the palace because Absalom is taking over and causing division. But then to hear that his son Absalom is found underneath a pile of rocks with the arrows on him. The price of sin. We will be paid sometimes all at once. Sometimes it comes through installments. But why would any of us in here want to live to be paid for <coughs> sin. When all the time we can sell everything that we have and purchase the pearl of great price. And inherit the blessings that comes from buying the pearl of great price. How many of you have ever discovered sometimes you can get a good deal and you can get a bargain on something and it's good. But there's other times where it's worthwhile just paying the price for the original. Because nothing else will do. The original was made to satisfy. And so there's a lot of things that call out to us in life. A lot of things that want our time, our money, our energy, that wants the very depth of our soul. <coughs> but the greatest call at the greatest price is the most valuable thing that we can invest in. And that is the power of Jesus Christ. I think not only about the rich young ruler, and I think not only about David, but I think about Haman. Did you ever read the book of Esther? And what a beautiful story it is. But you'll find in there a man named Haman who wanted everyone to bow to him. You know, we find that he was not so nice to a man named Mordecai. Amen. He never allowed himself really to, to, to be kind to this Mordecai when he came through through the gate of the city Mordecai. Uh, you, you find that, that, that Amen uh, 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 would not bow down to, 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 uh, 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 to, to him when, he, when, he, when Haman came through the gates. But you find that things change. Sometimes in our life, we need to realize that there are things that are calling us to bow down. And if we don't bow down, 
we will pay the price. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is king of kings and your roles. We've got to be willing to pay the price. See, there's a price tag for sin, sin, just like there is for everything in life. But we have to look at the things that we buy, not so much as just buying and getting and getting a deal. But we have to remember that what we put our money in is an investment. I know we'll never get a good investment out of our vehicle, probably. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, because they break down. They wear out. But do you know when you buy your house and you start putting some a little bit of uh, elbow grease into it, it can become an investment for you. Right? You put your, 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 your investment into education, and you may pay the price of education, but after a season and a period when you've done what you feel like God has called you to, and you've applied yourself to learning that occupation or trade, amen, the investment of your money, the investment of your time, the investment of your energy pays off. Not only does it pay off in the salary that you receive, but it also pays off in the dividends and the rewards of the fulfillment of your job. Amen. Uh, you, you may think about your family and, and the time that you put into them. Some of you moms, uh, uh, you'll never regret those years that you stayed home with your children because they were valuable years. You could have been seeking a career. You could have been advancing. But you realize that the best investment was in your children. And, and I'm still going to tell you that I feel that that's the best investment that you can give is placing in your children. Amen. Do I think it's wrong that, 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 that you sometime later on and have a no, not at all. But I think that there are valuable years that I think are important. No one will give your children the values that you give them. Amen. I, I still, uh, in, in marriage counseling, I still, uh, even uh, even as I I, I I talk to other ministers, uh, and that's, that's pretty much across the board. I'm not just talking about Pentecostal ministers. I'm talking about local ministers that I talk to, even in our community, will tell you that they think that's the best investment of a parent's time. That investment pays off in time. It will cost you, but it pays off. And so as we look at the best investment, I want to tell you that when you in yourself allow yourself to be sold out to Jesus Christ, that will be the best investment you will ever make. It may be hard. It may be difficult. But it will be worth it. I read a paragraph uh, 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 as, as I was researching for my message. And it says, Frederick the Great of Persia was walking on the outskirts of Berlin when he encountered an old man walking in the opposite direction. Frederick the Great of Persia said, Who are you? The man replied, I am a king. A king, laughed Frederick. Over what kingdom do you rule? And the man promptly answered back, over myself. When we learn, amen, to yield ourselves wholly to God in every area of our life, amen, that is when we find that paying the price really does matter. Amen. When we pursue things, amen, that are not easily to pursue in the flesh, amen, things that not come easily after us, but when we learn to rule our own man by the power of the Holy Ghost, that is when we really find the pearl of great price. What happened to the days where messages are preached? Amen. And the church is invited to come back around the altar and rededicate themselves to the Lord. Amen. Because there in that moment we are reflecting and realizing that the greatest pearl that we can buy in life is Jesus Christ. And are we spending our time and our energy, amen, our soul, amen, on buying this pearl of Jesus Christ and keeping Him? Or have we strayed off in other areas? God help us as a church. God help us as a people. God help us to buy the pearl of great price. You see, whatever the pearl is, 
You will have to get control over the man who lives within. Amen. Many distracting things will have to be removed from the life of a man or woman who wants to have the great love. Many uh, inconsistencies and behaviors and hypocrisies, amen, are going to have to be cut off from the man or woman who really wants to hold the pearl of great price. Amen. Obedience and discipline becomes the way of life for the man or woman who holds the pearl of great price. Amen. Hardships are weathered, amen, much easier to the man or woman who holds the pearl of great price. I never will forget when I was a little boy. Uh, uh, the, the, the song leader sharing a story about my parents when I was young. He was sharing how that when we grew up, we grew up on the, uh, uh, on the mountain. And most of you have been where I live. Amen. That's a wonderful mountain compared to where it was in my early years of life. You would go down this old dirt road that literally just fell off the side of a mountain. And there was one lane traffic at some places. Uh, I mean, big dirt holes in it. And why anybody would ever think of traveling up there during the winter months, but that's what we did. That was the way of life. So he was sharing the story of how my parents were traveling. The weather got bad. Amen. And all of a sudden, snow came and ice. Sister Jan, my dad, he had he had he had the uh, 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 chains on his truck. The place started sliding. Hey, he slipped this. My mom took my my brother, who was just an infant. She bundled him up and chose to walk that mountain home to keep him safe. You know what? It wasn't a hardship because she loved the treasure of that baby that she held in her arm. Can I tell you that life will not look like a hardship when we weather difficult places when the treasure of Jesus Christ and the pearl of great riches, amen, is held in our hands. I've got to keep Jesus above all, above my reputation, amen, above all the other responsibilities in life. I've got to have Jesus, amen. I've got to obey Him when other things call. It's about Buying the pearl of great price and taking care of it. Because nothing else is worth the pearl of great price. The price is all. The rich young ruler must sell all and give to the poor. Peter, Andrew, you've got to leave your nets. Matthew, you've got to leave your tax tables behind. I'm calling you. Paul, you got to leave, leave all your religious education behind. you got to leave your position, your pedigree. you got to leave it behind. Jesus said this in Matthew 22, verse number 37. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. See, Sometimes we just gotta wait and walk away from everything else. And say, no, God is calm. And I will be the calm. Just try to come to the piano. We're familiar with the word of God. When James and John, they wanted to sit on the right hand on either side of Jesus and the kingdom to come. And Jesus hence asked them this question. In Matthew 20, verse number 22, he said, You know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of, this, of, this, of the cup that I shall drink of and be baptized in the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said, Do you know that you're able? Do you know that all the disciples except for one are taking out Judas Iscariot? All the disciples except for one died in martyr's death. All of them except for John. It's not because they didn't want to kill him. See, the merchant man who sold everything had singleness of heart. He said, if it requires me to get rid of everything, that's what I will do for the pearl of great price. The pearl is worth everything that we pay for. Do you hear me? The pearl is worth everything that we pay for it. You may say, Brother Seville, you don't know what it would cost me if I serve Jesus. And you probably
probably don't know what's cost me. But I do know this, that God has not asked us to pay too great a price for the pearl. We've got to sell all. I want to ask you this morning, if you're here and you're not saved, are you willing to pay the price for the pearl? You'll say, I'm tired of working for minimum wage. You see, minimum wage was okay when I was in high school or when I was in college, but I really didn't want to work for minimum wage the rest of my life. And I would dare say, neither do most of you, if not all. So at the time that if you're here and you're not saved, you're saying, I'm done with working for minimum wage. I'm going to sell it all so that I can buy the pearl with great price. See, there are certain guidelines. Do you ever think about what it is to be a pastor or maybe a board member or a Sunday school teacher? You see, before any of all that happens, you have to look and see if these individuals are willing to pay the price. And after it seemed that they were willing to pay the price, in God's time, if it's God's will, he allows them in that possession. So many are not willing to pay the price. We've got to be willing to pay the price. See, the Lord, He builds His kingdom. And He does it through the way of others. God needs others who will work for Him. But are you willing to pay the price to work for Him? spiritual warfare, oh Lord, who wants to be a soldier in the war? It can be scary, it can be empowering, amen. We can be reluctant at times, but always brave. But knowing to sell all is worth it for the proper great price. The Bible talks about a race. Those who are in the race those who endure to the end shall be saved. Amen. We can't get caught up with the things that are present. We have to keep our eye on the finish line. The Bible talks about our Christian walk can be a struggle. Amen. It's a building up in one place and tearing down in another. It can be a mortifying I said this in opening and I'm going to say this in closing. But inside of each of you is a seed. Only the seed that makes it to the soil and is left for the rain. Amen. The cultivated soil and left for the rain will develop. I don't know how it all works. It's almost a mystery, Sister Jan, how all that germination works and the seed comes forth and produces so wonderful. Sometimes some seeds can find their way in the craziest places. And I'm a little crack and I'll walk away at home. And it's almost every other week I'm pulling weeds and grass up on the ground there because the seed has made its way there. You may feel like you're in the crack, amen, but God can make you grow in the crack. Amen. God is looking for those their seed out upon the broken ground and allow the rain to come down and say, I will give all. I will sell all. God, let the potential that you have placed in me let it be. Because it's placed there for me to sell my everything to God to a great price. So, in closing this morning, I'm wrapping it up quickly. Have you sold everything what's worth everything. If not, this morning there's a fresh opportunity for you to do that. Maybe you have already done that. Maybe this morning is an evaluation time to make sure that you're giving your all for the problem. There's nothing you can do to make this problem better. 
He's Jesus the Christ. Make sure you sell everything you purchase now. Would you get her in for a time of evaluation this morning? God, I'm selling everything that I'm 